sugar. It's one of the most confusing concepts in the world of health. And the term sugar is just thrown around by health professionals. Most people tell you not to have it, but yet people are using the word incorrectly. So in this video, we're gonna clear up a lot of the misunderstandings about the term sugar, and we're gonna differentiate it from carbohydrate and carbs and refined sugars and natural sugars so that you know exactly what we recommend eating and what we recommend avoiding in order to maximize your metabolic health. That's exactly right, Cyrus. The problem is that the term sugar is used as a blanket term to describe compounds that have drastically different biological effects in your body, which causes the confusion you were alluding to. Whole carbohydrates from plant foods are extremely beneficial to your health and provide natural sugars, natural sugars, which metabolize to glucose for your brain, liver, and muscles. On the other hand, refined sugars, okay, like refined, like actually refined, processed stuff, Cyrus, there are significant risk factors for type 2 diabetes and other chronic diseases that negatively affect your overall health. Unlike type 1 diabetes, which is an autoimmune condition, type 2 diabetes and its precursor condition, prediabetes, are caused by insulin resistance. We talk about that nonstop on this channel, Cyrus. Yeah, and if you wanna watch that video, please click on the video above and you can get a deep dive into insulin resistance so that you become a master of knowing exactly what causes it and what you can eat to actually reverse insulin resistance because trust us, that is possible. Absolutely, no question. Now the term natural sugars refers to carbohydrate chains that you find in whole foods like fruits, vegetables, legumes, and whole grains. They can still be sweet, and that's okay, but their chemical structure is very different to that of refined sugars. Now, natural sugars are sometimes referred to colloquially as complex carbohydrates. That's how people talk about them, because they're long chain molecules that actually take time to digest and fully absorb. And as a result of the fact that they take time, these sort of natural sugars actually lead to a much more consistent blood glucose rise and fall and a much more physiological process. Now, natural sugars are eaten in foods that also contain valuable micronutrients. And that's one of the beauties of eating whole foods because these valuable micronutrients are instructions that help tissues understand exactly how to absorb nutrients, how to utilize those nutrients, when to store them, when to oxidize them, when to export them, and how to pass them from tissue to tissue. These micronutrients are anti-disease or disease-fighting micronutrients that include things like minerals, fiber, water, antioxidants, and phytochemicals, and they only come in whole foods. They do not come in packaged and processed foods that contain refined sugars. Okay, let's continue to define some terms here. So refined sugars, these are artificial sweeteners that are added to processed and prepared food, including table sugar, sucrose, high fructose corn syrup, maltodextrin, dextrose, and many others. Refined sugars are added to foods and beverages to increase sweetness and consumer appeal. So the key thing here is you gotta understand the distinction. It's added to other foods, whereas the natural sugars, they're just in these whole foods, completely different situation. So refined sugars are sometimes called simple carbohydrates due to their short chain chemical structure because refined sugars can be metabolized very easily and are generally not protected by the vitamins, minerals, fiber, antioxidants, and phytochemicals found in whole foods. That's the huge distinction here. And this can, you know, consumption of these refined sugars can make your blood glucose increase very quickly and increase your risk for liver insulin resistance. And another way to think about this is that refined sugars are truly manufactured in a laboratory and they're the results of a manufacturing process. So they don't, you wouldn't find them in nature, especially not in a concentrated form. And they're designed for one purpose and one purpose only, which is to make foods taste unnaturally sweet and to get you to become slightly addicted to them so that you'll go back and buy it again. These, these hyper-concentrated sweeteners that you find all over the place in packaged and processed foods are found in foods that also contain other ingredients that are known to be very detrimental to your cardiovascular system and to your liver and to your muscle and to your brain 
and your liver and your kidney as well, including but not limited to things like trans fats. And whether you're eating donuts, pastries, chips, cookies, ice cream, soda, cookies, crackers, they're everywhere. So one of the simplest things that you can do to dramatically improve your overall health is not necessarily avoid carbohydrates completely. That's not a recommendation that we would give because there's a lot of long-term detrimental effects that can unfold over the course of time. But to migrate away from eating foods that contain refined sugars or refined carbohydrate and migrate towards foods that contain whole carbohydrates, because when you do so, you're getting rid of these artificial sweeteners and you're dramatically lowering your trans fat intake, your saturated fat intake, and significantly improving your micronutrient intake at the same time. 100%, no question. So let's define another key term here that people get confused about, Cyrus. Glucose, okay, glucose is a monosaccharide sugar that is the predominant building block of most whole carbohydrates found in nature. In addition, glucose is also the only monosaccharide found in fiber. Glucose is the primary fuel for your liver, muscle, and brain, and it's the most important fuel in your entire body. People, I think, are oftentimes just scared of glucose in general, Cyrus. Like, oh, my blood glucose is high. Like, I got to avoid glucose. It's, it's, it's bad for me, right? Absolutely. And, and that's what leads to this sort of carbophobia, if you will. People are constantly saying, I'm trying to avoid carbs. I'm eating a low-carb diet. Or, oh, carbs are bad for me because they turn into sugar. Or fruits are bad for me because they turn into sugar. And when I eat sugar and glucose is a sugar, then all of that is considered bad because it's going to raise my cholesterol, it's going to increase my blood glucose, it's going to increase my A1C, and it's going to make me fat. But we have to differentiate between all of these different words because if you use these words as just sort of blanket arguments, then you miss the true biological importance. Now, just like Robbie said, glucose is a fuel. Glucose is used predominantly by your brain. Your brain is literally designed to run off of glucose for 99.999% of your waking life. Your, your brain has an alternate energy mechanism, and that is to run off of these things called ketone bodies. And you can learn more about ketone bodies in this video up here. But these ketone bodies are used as a backup mechanism when there's insufficient glucose in your blood. In addition to that, your liver uses glucose and your muscles use glucose. In fact, most tissues in your body are using glucose on a minute by minute basis to uptake and burn or oxidize for energy. And when you deprive yourself of glucose because you're eating a low carbohydrate diet, you can, you can lower your blood glucose values, which is what most people are trying to achieve. But the problem is that in the long term, it can actually create a whole collection of metabolic issues that become worse than having high blood glucose in the first place. People are trading one problem for many other problems and in a lot of cases, bigger problems. So uh, particularly in the case of pre-diabetes and type 2 diabetes, you could just address all the problems and, and, and be done with it. So maybe we should wrap this up, Cyrus, and, and, and come to the conclusion here, which is that sugar is not the problem. It's the distinction between what type of sugar are we talking about? What is the source of the quote unquote sugar you're consuming? And also, what type of environment are you consuming these foods in? Are you actually following a truly low-fat, plant-based, whole food diet like we talk about here at Mastering Diabetes? That's important to know. It's, a, it's an important distinction to understand. And we help people solve this through our coaching program and really dig into the details. So I hope that anybody who's looking for support to reach out to us, comment below, get involved in our personalized coaching, and we can help. Absolutely. All you have to do is go to masteringdiabetes.org slash start. And there you can learn more and get started on your path to reversing insulin resistance permanently for the rest of your life. Lower your A1C, lower your body weight, and feel the best you've ever felt in years. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.